Hello, how you doing? My name is Alessandro, also known as Daniel, for those of you who know me here in uh, Texas. Um, we've recently just purchased a house, and um, so many people on Facebook um, have wanted to see some pictures and what it looked like. And I, I, my, my Facebook post was, I, I bought the ugliest house on the block, and I did that for a reason. And so as I was thinking about um, looking back at the Facebook post, I thought, I was talking to my wife Kenya who's taking the camera right now and I thought why don't we do a real estate investing uh, video and what we were able to do is with my experience in real estate investing um, I thought well, yeah why don't I go ahead and just document the fixing up of the house the repairs and I could talk about funding and so we started to put this together and uh, I thought what a better way to do it well, on our own house. So um, a little bit about my background real quick. Um, at the age of 22, I bought my first real estate uh, foreclosure home. I bought it for $32,000 in Maplewood, Missouri. And about a year later, I turned around and sold it for about $98,000, um, putting in about twenty-five dollars to $30,000 into it. Um, it wasn't a bad deal um, for my first one. And there were some issues that came up, and I will, I'll talk a little about those in a later video. Um, and then after that, I went out to purchase a, another home. It was actually a much bigger home, also in Maplewood. It was a 4,000-square-foot uh, home, 100-year-old um, home, that I ended up rehabbing, and I did that over a three-year period. Um, that house I bought for $65,000 and turned around and sold it, I think, for 180 or 200000 three or four years later. Um, and there were also some issues with that as well as far as, um, you know, uh, problems that you run into when fixing up a home. So anyways, what I want to do is um, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you the house that I purchased here in Texas. And um, I'm going to show you a little bit about the outside. I'm going to tell you some numbers. And then over the next uh, three videos, what we'll do is we'll discuss the funding. How do you find funding for real estate investments? Um, how do you actually go about doing the repairs? What type of contractors do you hire? Um, and then we'll also talk about the, um, the way of finding properties. And so um, there's no magical formula to real estate investing. Um, there's a couple of underlining concepts that you need to understand. Um, very simple. Um, what you'll come to find out with most real estate investing is there's just some time involved and some research, and that's it. Um, it can be a very lucrative business, and it can be a very dangerous business. Um, and what I mean by dangerous mean that you can lose a lot of money in it if you don't know what you're doing. And so hopefully over these next couple videos, um, I'll show you some key line, some underlining principles that'll help you uh, with the real estate investing. And um, let's take a look and have fun, see what happens. Okay, so here we are um, at the house that we purchased. Now, um, as you can see, the house from the outside doesn't look that dramatically horrible other than the landscaping, um, the unmanicured front yard. Um, I, I don't know what they did here. This house, when it was purchased, or this house, it looks like they had rock as landscaping in the front, and they just let it go, and so the grass kind of over kind of grew in. Um, you know, chipped paint. Uh, the entire roof needs to be replaced here. Uh, landscaping. As you can see, this house has no curb appeal. Um, it's not the type of house that most people would look at and be like, oh, this is my dream home. So as we're looking at the house, a um, couple things we see, what I look for in real estate investments, I kind of look for the ugliest house on the block. And that, that kind of prompted my Facebook post where I said I bought the ugliest house on the block. Um, you look at this house, it needs a lot of work. Look, there's no lights. Looks like the, the last owners, um, they figured out they were getting foreclosed on, so they thought, let's just take everything that we can out of the house. Um, if you look at the chip paint, it looks like you need some new fascia boards here. Um, the brick is good. One thing I look for in real estate is I look for stuff that has a strong foundation, like a brick home. Um, sometimes when you do siding and stuff like that, a lot of that stuff can be deteriorated. Um, these iron doors are good. The front door obviously is just a mess. This thing is uh, doesn't even work here. There was no handle here. You see the handle was missing. So these are all great things that I look for. When I first looked at this house, I thought, wow, this thing has a lot of potential. Most people look at a house like this and run the other direction, um, and it takes time. You know, when, you're, when you look at houses, um, you'll probably look at anywhere from 50 to 100 houses before you, you actually um, find a good deal. 
And so, as we're walking through this house, what we notice is uh, they took all the light fixtures out. There's some holes in the wall. Um, you know, what I'm looking for is uh, I make sure that the roof, I look at the ceiling, make sure there's no big water stains or anything like that. Um, I look at the doors. I come into this other side of the house here. See, they just took all the light fixtures. Looks like they tried to burn something here. Um, they took all the bookshelves, everything that was in the house, they took it with, you, with them. They didn't feel bad about poking holes anywhere. Um, this, house had, uh, this house had shutters, so they took all the shutters with them. Um, they got the house. Typically that's what happened when most people, they get foreclosed on, they're pretty upset. Um, they feel like everyone's out to get them, and so they want to take as much stuff as possible. I think it's more of a hassle to do that, to take everything out and just leave. Here, they literally took everything out of the kitchen except the kitchen sink. They left the kitchen sink. Is that nice of them? So, they took all the light fixtures. They took the cabinets here, the stove, the refrigerator. Some of the cabinets, I don't know what they're going to do with the cabinets, I guess. They really like the cabinets. Um, the doors are kind of all beat up. All just the house has just been left. Um, to rot. And so, anyway. Okay, so what you're looking at in most houses here is you want to look at some things that are, the, that are going to be the high ticket items. So you're looking at roofing, you're looking at flooring. Um, what I like about this house is this house is all the main walkway areas are all tiled. Now the tile's dirty and that can be clean and that's not a problem. Um, paint is not an issue, okay? Um, carpet is not a big deal. Okay, carpet can be done fairly inexpensive. So, so paint, carpet. Um, if the floors were all torn up and stuff like that, I had to retile this entire house, I probably wouldn't have bought it. A um, couple other things you look for is you look at your furnace and your heater. Um, you know, they, they actually took the evaporative cooler off the top of the roof here. They took that with them. So I planned on converting to refrigerated air anyways. Um, if we look at the bathroom, we see that the bathroom's gonna need some done, uh, some work done. Got some tiles, bathtub needs to be retiled. Um, put some new countertop granite here on the vanities. Um, a lot of this stuff can be repainted. Uh, it's amazing what paint can do. And then we go to the bedrooms, and the bedrooms are good sizes. Um, the carpet, I'm not afraid of carpet, but we'll just end up pulling that out. But the, the rooms, the walls are in pretty good shape. Um, and one thing I look for is I look for stains on the ceiling. That's one thing you want to see. If you see a lot of stains, water stains on the ceiling, you got some serious roof issues, and that can be a very costly um, thing to fix. And so, as we go through, there's the second bedroom. And light fixtures, like I said, they took all the light fixtures, but that's not a big deal. What if the Home Depot those? <coughs> Um, sometimes there are some uh, overstock stores that they over have overstock that you can go into. So coming into the master bedroom, a couple things that really stood out. First of all, the size of the bedroom is a good size. Um, I got my wife's makeup counter. You're happy about that, aren't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we'll put some granite in there. We'll clean it up. We'll light fixtures. Bathroom's not big by any means, but, you know, based on the age of the house, the house was built in 1975, and they typically had smaller bathrooms. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm not going to, what I'm not going to do to the house, what I need everyone here to understand, yeah, that's nice and nasty. Look at that. That, that shower was leaking. It just needs to be completely redone. One thing I want you guys to understand when you're looking at a house, you're not looking at a house for yourself. You're looking at it as an investment, okay? What typically most, most investors, most, most first-time investors do is they fall in love with the house and they start doing things to the house that isn't going to return them and it's, it's not going to be a return on their investment. So they start ripping out bathrooms all the way. They start making bathrooms bigger. They start adding additions onto the house. They start opening up all the stuff and it ends up not getting the value out of the house when you decide to sell it because you've overspent money. 